All right, man, look. So with this RICO, man, and this YSL trial, once again, uh, I've been following pretty closely. Uh, one for one, I've been off of work, so it's giving me time to look into things that I feel are interesting. I feel this case is interesting. So <clears throat> one thing I'll say, this RICO the difference in it is it's not like how how can I say it? it's it's not like there's charges and the and the state's prosecution just focuses on these charges that are going against Williams and the five uh, defendants because we got we got to take into consideration that these defendants this is all-encompassing trial. There's Young Thug, and then there's five uh, defense lawyers for each five of his codies. So, this is why it's going to take so long, and that's why it's so much. The, the witnesses that the state has, there's over 400 witnesses if I'm correct let me make sure that's right yeah there's over 400 witnesses so if you can imagine that I mean the process is um, state calls witness to the stand state questions the witness and after that you got five lawyers who can cross-examine that witness. And they got to do that for each and every witness that the state has. So that's part of the reason why this case is going to be stretched out for a long period of time. Um, you know, 180 overt acts. This is another, this is another, re like, and, and I'm going to go back to that, to what I was saying earlier about, um, you know, what's presented to the jury. These overt acts are presented to the jury. And these overt acts aren't all crimes. Like, with this RICO, it allows them to build the story of the organization in any other case that's not a RICO, all of this information that the prosecutor has <clears throat> as evidence or as, you know, things, the furtherance of the conspiracy of these moving parts that they are calling YSL, that is YSL. <clears throat> in another case, all of this would not be admissible in court. In this RICO, when they put that RICO on this case, what that allowed the state to do is paint the full narrative and all of the moving parts within the organization. So you got overt acts, overt act number 23, overt act number 49, all the way. They got 180 overt acts that basically is basically the furtherance of a conspiracy is what uh, over act is for example young thug rents a car in his name and later on down the line in the same week that car was pulled over with someone else in it not even young thug with a stolen gun in it so a uh, over act would be um Young Thug, a piece of paper with Young Thug's signature on it saying that he rented this car. Uh, another uh, uh, overt act could be simply Young Thug doing this on his nose and he got a tattoo here. You know, everybody do this motion like that. That was an overt act. Another overt act that I seen uh, was just gang signs. Them throwing YSL up. Just him sitting there like that on an Instagram post. That's an overt act. Like, so, of course, it's not illegal to do this on Instagram. 
but they're trying to build a complete story of um of what this organization is. <clears throat> but you know, the prosecution when it comes to Miss Love and the state, her name is Miss Love, I I believe. And the state, um, they got to tighten their shit up when it come down to it. Even just in her opening statement, she was using PowerPoints with information that was not submitted to the defense so they could look over it to object beforehand. So this is what the judge is so frustrated about. And that's why we've seen so many objections from the defense while the prosecutor was talking, because these things should have been submitted beforehand so they wouldn't waste the jury's time. Now, you would think, hell no, you can't just come in here and just put a whole bunch of stuff on the screen that no one's looked at. Because you're going to talk for two seconds and it's going to be an objection, objection, objection. And to, to stop that from happening, those documents should have been um, already given to the defense. And that was a mistake on the prosecutor's side. Uh, there was something else she did when it came to she had a slideshow and it it had the defense lawyer, Mr. Seal's name was on one of the slideshows in, in reference to another case of someone that was going through an appeal. Well, basically it was, it, it was kind of, it sounded convoluted to me and I don't, I'm not a lawyer or a professional in any of this, but what I do know is the outcome of that is the judge got very, the judge was like, now look, you know, <laughs> he got he got serious with her. He got stern with her over this because there's certain things that the court orders. The court orders, if the state prosecution is not following the court orders, then it can ultimately end up in a mistrial. Because if things are shown to the jury that were not supposed to be shown then that's very bad. And that's when the mistrial can come up. Yes, the, the judge can say, okay, jurors, don't worry about that. That's not such and such and such. But that's not good at all. At all. So, yeah, another thing that I did see and that I seen people pointing out about the prosecution and those opening statements that she made multiple mistakes in was the fact that she tried to shift the burden of proof onto the defense. And that's a no-no. You cannot do that as a state's prosecution. You cannot shift the burden onto them to prove their... Okay, because she said her words were... In her opening statement, her words were... Um, what you will not see is them prove that um, that these guys aren't a member of criminal activity or criminal gang activity. And what that did, it, the reason why it goes against the rules of this courtroom is because the burden is not on them to prove if they're not a gang in, involved in a gang or whatever. And after she did this, the objection was had and they actually made the jurors leave and a motion was called and the judge actually told her, like, you're not doing, this is not how it goes. This is not what happens. The burden is not on the defense. The defense, they're defending. So she actually got a, a little quick talking to about it and the jurors were called back in after they had that discussion but I just think it's interesting the state and all of the resources that the state has that they're making these kind of mistakes 
uh, you know, the 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 jurors have had to be, you know, motion out and come back in, motion out, you know, so it's a lot going on with this case. Like I said, 400 witnesses the state prosecutor has. They have to question them. Then the defense <laughs> cross-examination from five different lawyers. All questioning one person, five lawyers objections. When it comes, you got objection, like if, if the state prosecutor does something and it's an objection, it could be objection one, two, and three from three different lawyers. And they might be on different bases because these lawyers are with their client, sitting next to their client. So it could be three different, uh, like, so that's why this thing is, is very... It's a lot of moving parts. Uh, the jurors, you know, shouts out to the jury because they have a task at hand. Like they got a real task with this one, man. It, it, Cause it's such a doozy. Uh, and the, the jurors got to make five decisions or six. If you count young thug, cause I believe it's young thug and five other co-defendants. So that's six decisions they got to make. And this is the the question that I have that I actually don't know is if this is a RICO and you're proving that this is an organization, they all work together, then how is there, how, how, why does the jury have to differentiate? Well, I guess they got to, I mean, because maybe all of them didn't do this, so they got to. Okay, so I, I kind of understand it, but that part to me, I really, I kind of don't understand because the jury has to make a separate judgment for each defendant, but they're all getting tried together. Um, and for for the state prosecutor, they almost have to, it seems like they have to make it specific in certain cases for each person, like at a certain point in time, I think they got to get real specific with each person, with each defendant, uh, so it doesn't just become a group up by association thing. So I, I don't know that. I, I'm still kind of curious as to why it is like that. But uh, I don't know, man. I'm going to keep on watching. Definitely going to keep on watching, you know. That's why, Jado, man, I'm out.